You may not recognize the name Nadir Kayat, but you've definitely heard his music. Known as the music super producer Red One, he's produced everyone from Lady Gaga to Enrique Iglesias to Jennifer Lopez. He's made his biggest impact with Lady Gaga, producing her albums The Fame, The Fame Monster, and Born This Way. We talked to him about building his brand as a music producer and what it's like to work with some of the biggest names in the music business. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Uh, Good and, to be here. And you're here in America, you live where? All over the world. All over LA, the world. LA, Madrid, all over the place, Morocco. You're originally from Morocco? Yes, I'm Moroccan born and raised in Morocco, yeah. And the phenomenon that I want to talk to you about right off the bat is the dance phenomenon. And yeah. this idea of songs being remixed and marketed through the clubs. Yes. And what that has done for music. Uh, to be honest with you, me, I'm, I'm a musician. I play guitar, I used to play in a rock band, I, I sing. So I'm, I'm a musician who learned to produce. And I, w I wasn't thinking dance or club, or I, I was just doing music. I wanted to bring the 80s, you know, you know, with Gaga felt when I met her the first time, I got this, this feeling of like, oh my God, the 80s are, can, can come back again, where music, chord progressions and drums, big drums and all of that. So the phenomenon happened because I used synths. I didn't use guitars, you know, especially on Gaga. And, uh, you know, all the, suddenly the European music, which was more dense, became kind of acceptable. So it became like a door opener for exactly. those kind of instrumentation and the four on the floor and, and the dance music. And uh, suddenly it was like, you know, the door opened and the next one and the next one of the DJs became popular and, and uh, it changed from being the remix thing to uh, the actual production, right. the radio starting, music. Starting with a DJ or a, a dance absolutely. producer. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And so what we've seen is we've seen a cultural shift. For many, many years, hip-hop was uh, the number one selling music. That's starting to shift now. And guys like you are becoming personalities in your own right. Are you comfortable being out front? The thing is, like, I don't consider m myself as, as, you know, as any, I'm, I'm just a producer, I'm a musician who loves music, who's open to anything, I work with you too, I have a rock band in my label, I work with all kinds of music, so I don't want to put myself into the wave that's happening right now, but yes, I had many number ones, a lot of hits, and I'm shifting my music all the time, and I want to give music to people it doesn't matter what kind of music, as long as it's good quality music. Now, your record label, 2101, just scored its first platinum hit. Now, that's one million records. <laughs> Thank you. With the song We Run the Night by Havana Brown. Yes. So how did you make it number one in North America from well, a marketing standpoint? What happened, I love Havana Brown because she's an amazing singer, amazing artist. And I didn't know that before. I just knew her as a DJ who toured the world. She's a girl DJ. And when I had a, a friend of mine, actually the, the president of, of uh, Universal Republic, call me and say, you know, I want to send you a record. It's number one in Australia. And, you know, it's Havana Brown. I was like, of course I know Havana, the DJ. So I was like, okay, send me. It was like, can you do a remix to it? Something to make it more global, American and, and global. I was like, if I like it, if I feel it, I, I'll do it. So I listened to it. And I was like, oh my God, who's singing? I didn't know that she could sing. And he was like, it's Havana Brown. And then I fell in love because it's, it's a new, new idea. A DJ that can sing, that can perform, that's double. Like it's an artist, you know, and a DJ. So I produced it, and, uh, or reproduced it to make it more global. And I called Pitbull, my friend, you know, we've done a lot of... A lot of history together. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I was like, I was like, my brother, you need, I need, I need, you know, I need you to help me on this project. From the bottom of the map, to the land down under, you feel my drive, see my vision and hear my hunger. And, and that's the great thing about him is that he's been able to really cross over and, and make it even bigger because of the fact that he has fused hip hop and Latin music with dance. Absolutely. And he's made these these featured performances that help deliver a broader audience yeah, to your artists. Absolutely, Mr. Worldwide, you know, who thinks globally, like I do. You know, I've uh, always been globally, and uh, 
And what he does to songs, his energy, his flow, he's like, a, he's a real artist, he's a real artist, you know? And, and he takes every song to the next level. So what are the sounds that make it more American? <laughs> the drums has to hit hard, okay. that's for sure. So I just make the sound big, make it sound, we have identity and you know, all these kind of details that makes the song unique and, and easy for people to understand and to remember and to feel. And you've achieved those goals uh, in a big way with Lady Gaga. Yes. What is uh, your role when you work in the studio with someone like Lady Gaga, who is a musician in her own right and really probably very picky about yes. how she works? We had, we had a good, good, good connection. And every time we're in the studio, it's not about egos, we forget. Because how we started, when I met her, she didn't have a deal. Right. She was just a girl that loved music. So when it comes to me and her, uh, yes, I start the track. You know, I'm really in everything I do. The melodies are so important to me. Because coming from Morocco and, and knowing the world, like so many countries don't understand English, you know, don't know English. They just know it, you know, like that, but they don't talk it. So you have to write something that's easy for people to sing along. To. So I always focus on the big, good melodies, you know, easy to, to remember. And you sometimes have three or four hooks yeah. in one song. Absolutely. It's very important, you know. You know, you got to give people something they can sing, they can feel and sing it with you. You sing along, too. And uh, so the process has always been, I come up with a melody or she comes up with a melody. If, if, if she comes up with an incredible melody, that's what we're going to use. If I come up with the best melody, that's what we're going to use. It wasn't about the ego, about right. Lady Gaga or Red One. It's just about writing the best song possible. And the other thing, I have to give it to her. She's an amazing lyricist. Her lyrics are just incredible. And again, the trust. This time I'm not leaving without you. She trusts me when I say, that's too complicated or that's... You know, like this line, you know, it's not easy to sing, it doesn't sound hooky, she would change it. You continue to have hit after hit, uh, and you started out not having a deal. So, how did that change your life? Coming into money, coming into uh, being thrust into a position where you really have to think like a business person. Yeah. How did your life change? Well, it changed when it comes to money and people around you. And but, how do people around you change? I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> not the closest ones. The closest when they know you, they, they, you know, you go way back. And some, some of them, I grew up with them, my family, my friends. Uh, but uh, a lot of people, they see you more than you are, or they have an idea of who you are that's not really who you are. You know what I mean? I, I never consider myself I'm somebody more than I was before. I'm the I want to be the same person. I feel the same person. It's just that I had hits that are out. They're not here. You know, I understand them. Right. Maybe I see it, but, but people see it more than it is, you know? So what is the hardest part about your success? The hardest part is making, like, you have to do a do double effort to make everybody feel good. You know what I mean? Because they really, uh, it, when it comes to music, I love music. I'm a fan. I'm like a kid in the studio. So... It doesn't matter. It didn't change anything. I don't think like, oh my God, I have to do number one. No, I just want to write a okay. good song. It's fun. It's all of, it's the same fun. And as long as every time it's fun, the hits come by themselves. But when it comes to the people around me, or you have to be double, I mean, two times nicer than you are so they don't feel like you've changed. That's the only thing, okay. that, that's the only challenge that I had, so you have to treat everybody nicer. <laughs> so and that's like, got to be, well, what I hear you saying is talking about managing relationships yes. as well, because it's not just about the music. No. I mean, now you're sitting at the helm of a record company. You've got all these constituencies yeah. that you have to work with. Yeah. You work with how many? Five different record companies that you have a relationship with? Yes, absolutely. But, I mean, you know, they... The, the big companies, they know who I am and, and I know who they are. We have a mutual respect and they trust me when it comes to music. I trust them when it comes to what they do. So I have really good relationships when it comes to that. I know you got your own town. And now you have Priyanka Chopra, yes. the Bollywood star, who has delved into the music industry. She's been working on this record now for about a year and a half. Lots of anticipation. Tell me about that project. Well, Priyanka, she's a star. She's a Bollywood star. She's very known all over the world and an amazing personality. I understand why she's a star. 
you know. And it's about time to have a, a superstar, an Indian superstar, become a global superstar. And uh, uh, now more than ever, you know, like the world with the YouTube, Facebook, the world is becoming one. Uh, uh, people have access to anything, you know, in, in it comes to music and politics and everything, you know, everything about everything. So this is the perfect time to break a, a global star like her, an Indian. It's never been, we never experienced an Indian artist becoming huge. It's about time. I get the sense that you spent a lot of time thinking about the positioning of this record, uh, making sure that it's not taken as something where just this actress decided to do a record, but this is somebody who music w was the first priority. Yeah. And is that pressure too when you think about people not maybe taking her seriously because she's an actress? We know that you gotta give something special to people because she's Indian and it's not usual. We're not used to Indian artists becoming global superstars, you know? So you gotta give them something special, something unique about her. And meeting her, knowing her, she's so inspiring, they become, yes, the, the, the yeah. yeah, the job becomes so easy. You just see it, you just see it. I see the vision clearly, I saw it clearly. And we connected. She was like, that, this is exactly what I want. This is it. And I was like, this is exactly what we're gonna do, you know? So uh, it's, not, it's not hard. When it comes to people in, Bollywood or, or the Indian com community, it might be new to them as, as a, a Bollywood star becoming a global star. You know what I mean? Right. So they'd be like, oh, maybe she's this, she's that. But, but for the world, they don't, they, all they know, she's, from, she's an Indian girl that's coming out to the world. So we, what we did, we did the best music sh that she feels, she loves, who she is. We just represented who she is. You've helped to reignite careers. You've helped to bring uh, Jennifer Lopez to another level, to bring Enrique Iglesias to another level. How do you do that? Going from Jenny from the block <laughs> to the new modern sound and yeah. making it work. The thing is like, it's all about them. It's the artists, to me. So uh, of course, a lot of people thought I was crazy to work with Jennifer at that time. They thought I was crazy to work with Enrique Iglesias at that time, but to me, they are superstars. They are, they are superstars for a reason, because of who they are. People love them, the voices, everything about them. It just, to me, the, the formula was easy. Give them what they, give them the sound, give them the hits for now, for this generation to understand. Because when it comes to the stardom, they are. They are more than a regular artist. You know, they have that ex, ex mega expense. They need the right song. The right song, the right song, the right song, the right for for these times, you know? From a songwriting and producing standpoint, would you say that you've actually earned more on the on the publishing side or on the producing side? Uh, on the publishing side, absolutely. So as a creative guy, I mean, that's how you're gonna have longevity it's in It's about this writing career. those songs, absolutely. Creating music, and, and that could be used for, you know, movies, you know, you know licensing it to uh, commercials, to club, radio, ev you know, I just do something that everybody would love to listen to, you know? I'm from, I'm the ninth in my family. I'm the, the little child of my family, you know? And growing in Morocco and in my family, there was a lot of music, so I had to listen to all my brothers and sisters' music growing up. So some of my brothers loved rock, some of them like soul, some of them like more rock and music, Middle Eastern. I've listened to everything. That was the biggest, uh, you know, uh, preschool university of music in my house growing up. And of course, all my brothers, they play guitar, they sing. And uh, growing up in a musical family gave me a good foundation. Aha. Uh -huh. I think that's a critical difference Absolutely. between you and a lot of producers is that your songs start on a piano or a guitar. Absolutely. They don't Absolutely. start on a synthesizer <laughs> or creating a beat. Absolutely. How does musicality help you? I mean, it's everything. It is everything. It's the, it is the absolute foundation to who I am musically. As a producer, I don't, I'm not a beat maker, I'm a musician. That's what I said, you know, the first thing I said because having that foundation, knowing how to write a song. Like I studied everything, like all kinds of music, all 
uh, all the hits, why they are hits, why, what's in common. That formula, I, I feel that I know it. <laughs> for, for young people that aspire to be the next red one, do you recommend that they learn an instrument? Absolutely. Absolutely. An instrument and listen to all Motown music. You know, because Holland to me, your Holland. Yeah, you know, you know, the thing is like to me, all the, the, the hip hop producers and everything, it's amazing. Do hip hop, but just study music. Just study music. Do a little if effort. Like to all our teachers, because the Beatles or Rolling Stones and all of them try to do Motown. Hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Where music was on the highest level of, of, of melodies, of chord progressions and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with a cool beat. But just, you know, have that musicality in it that could be timeless. I would love, you know, to tell the new generation to do their research and, and to learn music, you know, uh, because that is the foundation of, of keeping good music alive. Because a lot of new producers listen to my music, listen to what I do. And I always make sure there's like that melody and that chord progression. I would never want it to be just wow, 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 like, like right. it's just a sound that's electronic and cool. Of course, I use coolness, but it's got to be with chord, some chords, some musicality in it to respect the teachers, <laughs> you know, the legends, and to respect music, and to be cool for the time, the art of writing a song. There's got to be some art in there. Congratulations Thank you. Thank on you your so success. Much. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And with Red One, I'm Lee Hawkins for The Business of Celebrity. We'll see you next time. There was a point where the industry was Ivy League, you know what I'm saying? As, you know, now it's become community college, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, there's no criteria, no qualifications that you have to have, you know what I'm saying? The first reaction I got from most people, what? That's your voice? And then I was like, yes. And I know it's going to take um, a little while. It is a transition. It's not um, like I'm abandoning what I do, but um, it's multitasking, I guess, you know, doing a little bit of everything.